All right, folks, welcome to another video on modeling PMSMs using MATLAB. Uh, so this video, we're going to be looking at how to implement a dynamic stator reference frame model of a PMSM using the very well-known basic equations under certain assumptions. Uh, now, this is a dynamic model, so you can see, you know, the time uh, varying variables here. So you're looking at the flux linkage. Uh, here we are looking at the voltages that that is going to be applied by the inverter or the control system and you see the resistance so this is the basic equation from the, the textbook uh, analysis of electric machines uh, that I showed uh, in a previous video and in this case we're going to assume a non-salient PMSM meaning the inductance uh, LQ and LD they are this, they're very close to each other so there's no variation and the primary reason we make that assumption is to simplify our model at least uh, you know when you get started with these kind of modeling uh, otherwise your inductance is going to be a function of theta r and when you have an induction inductance that is time varying when you find the time rate of change of the flux linkage that variation of inductance will count into uh, your flux linkage uh, and it'll it'll have a derivative term associated with it so in order to uh, avoid that we are assuming this non-salient condition and uh, for the most part you know for our for what we are going to do in terms of a learning point of view that's more than accurate and then if you do want to go ahead and implement such a saliency effects please feel free to, you know, you can derive this on your own and implement them and see what are the differences, okay? So, so that's why we are assuming this non-salient uh, PMSM or we are using a non-salient PMSM here. We are also looking at magnetically linear region. So there's no saturation uh, whatsoever in this discussion. And here you can also see the back EMF term or at least the magnetic term contributing because this is what is going to reflect as back EMF into your voltage equation. You can see the time rate of change of flux linkage and that's going to result in that back EMF which is a voltage. So, uh, so we're going to use this equation or set of equations and then let's see how we can implement this or how we can convert these set of equations to something that we can implement in simulate in MATLAB okay now another point to keep in mind here is unlike the rotor reference frame model you're going to see theta r in that uh, permanent magnet back emf component that you're going to see here okay so this is a big difference compared to the rotor reference frame models that we saw earlier okay all right so what does this look like well it's not that bad uh, so we have our VAS equation VBS equation and VCS equation okay and in order for us to find these IAS IBS uh, or rate of change of these ABC currents we're gonna pull all of them onto the left hand side and then we'll have the inductance matrix left of it right and and we'll have our voltage term so VAS minus RS IAS minus lambda M omega R cosine theta uh, sine theta became cosine theta because of the derivative term and that leaves us with these voltage equations and since we have our induct matrix on the left we can take the inverse so that we can directly find uh, the rate of change of IAS rate of change of ES rate of change of ICS with respect to time okay so well that's good so now we have the rate of change of the ABC currents but how do we get to ABC currents themselves right well uh, in Simulink we have an integrator block so we can easily integrate these values which will result in our IA IB or IAS IBS ICS values and and those are going to be our ABC currents that are going to be kind of, it's going to have a feedback type of a uh, format you saw uh, 
uh, in the road similar to what you saw in the rotor reference frame model okay so that's what we're going to do so i'm going to show you how to implement this uh, and then once we implement the motor we're going to add uh, the field oriented control part so this is actually i x s dot so s, x can be a s b s o c s uh, and then in in the simulink model i'm gonna we're gonna have our field oriented control system also there along with our machine model and i will walk you through that uh, in, a, in a right now okay all right so here uh, you can see a uh, couple of things that are familiar. This is our position and the speed uh, signals here, right? And then you can see here our uh, very familiar rotor reference frame dynamic model for the PMSM. And you can see we have FOC or field oriented control implemented. We tested this out in our previous video, okay? Now, in order for us to compare I'm including this so that way you can see you know are they similar are they not uh, and then here this this top model this is where we have uh, the stator reference frame a PMSM model okay so this is the PMSM model uh, we have the integrators to find our ABC currents those currents are fed back and then we transform those ABC currents to rotor reference frame DQ currents using our uh, transformation here that we've discussed earlier. Those currents are fed back, passes through the PI regulator, and they are fed into uh, your transform again. So this is the forward transform. This is the inverse transform. No, I'm sorry. This is the forward transform. This is the inverse transform. Uh, so in this inverse transform, we take the QD variables back to ABC uh, and we are assuming our zero sequence is zero in this case. If you choose to, you can make this anything uh, and you can even modify to include the zero sequence dynamics also. Uh, and then since we are applying these ABC voltages to a motor, uh, we don't have an inverter implemented in this model. You could if you want to. but since we are considering you know a non pwm or an ideal uh, inverter so it looks like a one just whatever the controller demands uh, is applied to the motor and you can see here if you, when you go inside this block okay you can see uh, basically it's a function again uh, the same parameters that we used last time okay uh, and then this is your LQ value. Uh, if you go look at the text or in my previous videos, I talk about what this relation is. Uh, so you can, if you know LQ, uh, OLD, uh, in the non-salient case, you can find your phase inductance and approximate uh, the leakage inductance here. Uh, and then using those parameters, we find uh, a actually we find ia dot ib dot ic dot uh, based on the voltages that we apply based on position based on speed based on the currents that we are uh, finding by integrating these rate of uh, time varying currents okay so here we make the resistance matrix here we make the voltage vector in this uh, in this line we're making the current vector and then here we are making the inductance matrix okay and then with all that we are calculating our back emf voltage we know our lambda m we know our speed and these are our back emf terms and then we basically compute all of these uh, very similar to what you saw in in that equation i showed in on the paper okay on the piece of paper so the sim same equation and now we are assigning these different elements into our ia.ib.ic dot to be uh, passed out to the outside, then goes to the integrator, and then IA, IB, and IC values get fed back to, to complete the module. Okay, so fairly simple model, uh, and, and I'll show you uh, how it behaves. Uh, and before I do that, I want to show you a couple of things. The model settings, they haven't changed. 
you go to the model setting so you're still running fixed step uh, ODE4 uh, Runga Kutta method and then I'm increasing the step size to 1e minus 5 uh, because sometimes smaller steps, uh, larger step size tend to throw, uh, throw uh, convergence errors. Okay, so it's made it a little bit smaller, 10 times smaller. And if you run this, you can, you'll be, so you'll see uh, what these ID and IQ currents look like. And then you can also see or compare with our uh, rotor reference frame model to see what they look like okay so let's give it about uh, a minute or so it's taking its time actually i don't know if, yeah we should be able to see this in real time relatively real time and then you'll see the step response being applied uh, here you are looking at IQ and ID. So initially the reference is zero and yellow is your IQ reference, refer uh, IQ current. Reference is set to two amps and you can see the reference being followed. Okay. And then the ID reference is zero. So that's being maintained at zero. This slight transient is due to the cross axis coupling because as soon as IQ is changing, it's going to, the D axis experience some change in voltage, uh, so it's uh, it's gonna try to compensate by adding voltage from the inverter side. Okay, then let me show you what my uh, references are. So step time at one, reaching a value of two here, yeah, and then so simulation is complete, and you can see uh, the this response here. Okay, and then let's see, let's compare. So this is our reference uh, rotor reference frame model. We uh, looked at these earlier, and if we compare, you can see that they're almost the same. Okay, very, very close. I mean, you can zoom in uh, if you really, really want to see some difference, but yeah, so they're almost the same in terms of uh, responses. Okay, and then this is your ID again, very, very close result uh, between the DQ and the. ABC models. Okay, so actually that's it. So this is uh, the implementation of the PMSM, the stator reference frame model using MATLAB Simulink, no fancy blocks. You just need your basic block set and the scripting function or the user defined function here to implement the model. Okay, I hope uh, you like uh, working with this or looking at uh, learn, learn something from this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be looking at using some of the SimPower blocks to implement this similar characteristic, the similar model, but using SimPower. And let's see what that looks like. Okay. All right, folks. Uh, thank you and look forward to seeing you in another video.